Hi, this is Dr. Mark Hyman. Welcome back to my blog. We're heavy, and I don't mean fat. We're heavy with metals. Nearly 40% of us have toxic levels of lead and don't know it. But so what if we don't have symptoms? Well, first, many of us do have symptoms, but just don't know it. In fact, we may attribute problems to be something else when, in fact, it could be from low-level lead poisoning. You may have headaches, insomnia, be irritable, have a low sex drive or a tremor. You may have mood problems, nausea, depression, memory problems. You might have trouble concentrating, poor coordination, or even constipation. While all of these problems can have other causes, they may also, in fact, be attributable to lead poisoning. In fact, I just returned from a medical conference on heavy metals and health. And though I have been treating toxicity for, for over a decade with, from heavy metals, including myself, I was surprised to hear about really new research that has completely been ignored. It was a study published in 2006 in the conservative medical journal called Circulation, and it should have been on the front page of the New York Times. Let me tell you about why the study was so important and knowing about it could save your life, and why you probably won't hear about it from your doctor. Blood lead levels were measured in a nationally representative sample of over 13,000, almost 14,000 adult participants of the third National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. And they were recruited from about 1988 to 1994, and they were followed for about 12 years. And they wanted to track what diseases people developed and why they died. Well, now it's important to remember that, that since lead was removed from gasoline and house paint, blood lead levels of the average person have dropped by tenfold in the last few decades. But the level of lead is still dramatically higher than in people who lived before the industrial age, and we continue to be exposed to, to lead in our soil and our water, as well as from our own bones where it's stored. In fact, the average blood levels 50 years ago were about 40 micrograms per deciliter. The, the level considered safe by the government has continued to go down and is now considered to be less than 10 micrograms per deciliter. But this new study and others like it bring the idea of any safe level of this toxic metal into question. What this study found was that any level over 2, not 10 or 40, 2 in the blood caused dramatic increases in heart attacks, strokes, and death. In fact, after controlling for all the other risk factors, including cholesterol, high blood pressure, smoking, inflammation, that the risk of death from all causes increased by 25%. Deaths from heart disease increased by 55%. The risk of heart attacks increased by 151%, and the risk of stroke increased by 89%. What was even more remarkable was that it was estimated that nearly 40% of all Americans have toxic levels of lead, enough to cause these problems. This is potentially a greater risk for heart disease than even cholesterol, but this is not the first indication of problems with lead. In fact, a report in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that high blood pressure in postmenopausal women is strongly correlated to blood lead levels. So why is that? Well, during menopause, bones break down faster, releasing stored lead and injuring blood vessels, leading to high blood pressure. And we also found out that high lead may also be responsible for kidney failure. A study in the New England Journal of Medicine found that using chelation therapy with EDTA in patients with kidney failure to reduce lead levels could prevent further loss of kidney function and save billions of dollars in healthcare costs, and millions of people would not need dialysis. Wow, digest that, right? Chelation therapy saves lives and billions. Why are your doctors not offering this as standard treatment? Because, as, as I've said many times before, doctors don't learn two of the most important things in medical school, nutrition and how to deal with environmental toxins. Not only does this cause heart disease, high blood pressure, and kidney failure, but it's connected to the epidemic of children with ADD, developmental problems, learning problems, and autism. Even though the safe level of lead has been set at, at 10 micrograms per deciliter in the blood, recent studies show that the greatest drop-off in IQ scores in children happens between a level of 1 and 10 micrograms per deciliter, so much lower. And this is particularly scary since more than 10% of poor and inner-city children had lead exposure levels over 10 micrograms per deciliter. So I recently treated a young boy with extremely high lead levels who had Asperger's, severe ADD, violent behavior. He got the lead from his mother who had very low vitamin D levels and developed osteoporosis and released a lot of lead from her pregnancy, uh, during her pregnancy from her bones, which got into the boy by the placenta. Now getting rid of his lead over time through chelation and nutritional support dramatically improved his attention, behavior, and social skills. The lead is found in our soil and water. In fact, we live in a sea of heavy metals. In areas with 
a history of industrial pollution, people attract lead into their homes from contaminated soils. Regular house dust often contains 17 times the background level of lead. In Washington, D.C., the water was so contaminated with lead that the government recently had to provide free water filters for everyone in the city. Up to 20% of tap water may be contaminated. So what can you do about it? All right. First, find out if you're lead toxic. The easiest test is a simple blood test. Be sure the lab can measure very low levels of lead accurately. Anything over 2 micrograms per deciliter is toxic and should be treated. Unfortunately, the blood test only checks for current or ongoing exposures, exposure, so you must test for heavy metals with a heavy metal challenge test, which can be administered by a doctor trained in heavy metal treatment. Next, reduce your exposures by having a no shoes in the house policy. Also, test your water for heavy metals, and, and there's many home test kits which you can do this. Uh, buy a carbon or reverse osmosis filter for your drinking water. Take a buffered ascorbic acid or vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams a day, which helps remove lead from the body. Take two to 4,000 units of vitamin D3 daily, which will prevent your bones from releasing lead into your bloodstream. And, and then realize that, unfortunately, many of us have toxic levels of lead in our bodies. But thankfully, there's a lot we can do to prevent it and to treat it. Thank you for listening. This is Dr. Hyman.